Okay, this is our solar panels. The uh, white tape running around it is three strips. That's actually a solar powered electric fence to keep the goat and the horse away from it. If you look, if you look closely, you'll see pollen on the panels. In the springtime, starting to fall. Last year, I was very concerned about that, cutting back on the power. So I monitored the power closely, washed the panels off real good, and then monitored it again. I literally couldn't see any difference. It, it wasn't enough of a difference that I could measure it. So unless it gets real thick in there, I'm not going to spend too much time with the pollen. Uh, and uh, But that's what that is in case uh, you were wondering what that powder looking material is on the panels. The reason we're missing a panel there is this was a 12 kilowatt system. And if you add up the number of panels, we got row three running that way and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen that way, that'd be thirty-nine. But the rating of the system only called for 38. So they left one out of the center, which is fine with me because I can use it access uh, as an access point. There's the horse and the goat. The uh, horse in particular could really tear this thing up. He's big enough, he'd scratch his back on it and we'd have a big problem. But this is my um, little solar powered uh, electric fence charger. Actually works great. Um, got it from Tractor Supply and I don't know if you can hear it, but it's clicking. You can tell that it kind of spikes pulses. It doesn't feel good when you touch it. What I'm going to do is turn that off so I can get in here without getting shocked and uh, we'll take a look underneath these panels. Each of these footings is uh, roughly two feet deep, roughly 10 foot diameter or 10 inch diameters. And these, this framework is bolted to the footings. And uh, actually, it's been pretty sturdy. I haven't noticed much swaying or anything in, in the breeze. And it's kind of breezy today. There we go. Axotec, it's a German company. Model AC 33OP to 72S. They're 330 watts and up to a thousand volts, maximum system voltage, 16 amps. So that's what we got for panels. And like I said, there's 38 of them. You can see there we're reading 1.9. That's actually reading in watts. So 2,266, that's watts. It's cloudy right at the moment. A cloud has blown over the sun. Uh, we'll try to catch it here in a minute when it's when the clouds pass so you can see the difference. It's got a disconnect here and there's conduit goes underground. The cable runs probably 200 feet up to the house to another disconnect then it's tied into the grid before it comes into our breaker box. These things are panels are wired in strings. Um, I believe there's there's like, I think, 10 of them per string, except for one's only got eight. Not sure if that's the best way to do it, but since we, we contracted with other people to do this, we just let them do it, and it's worked pretty well. This inverter has got a uh, uh, capacity of like 11.4 kilowatts output. The highest I've seen this system read was right after it was put in. It spiked up to about 11.3. Most of the time it's less than that, and we'll show you some data a little bit later that uh, shows you the impact of clouds. It's dramatic. Uh, a dreary, cloudy day can have a major impact on something like this. Um, I didn't realize it actually be that much, but the whole system is grounded. Um, and the uh, panel framework here is grounded. The, I got the electric fence with th actually three ground rods on it. And uh, I also double checked the um, orientation of this system relative to, um, to true geographic south. And I put this little rod up here, mounted it perpendicular to this. 
where I could track the shadow uh, during different times of day is pretty close to really geographic south, which sometimes doesn't match up to magnetic south like you think. I also checked the angle. You know, these permanent systems like this are uh, compromised, and they design them for you, the latitude that you happen to be at. This is the six mile South Carolina area. And so it's a compromise between summer and winter and the angle of the sun and all that. But I'm gonna try to catch this power output when the sun comes out here in just a minute. Okay, we're reading now 10.447 kilowatts. It's full sun right at the moment. Um, for the time of day, time of year and so forth, that's probably about as good as it's going to get right now. Might be a little better. There's the solar panels out there. Here's an underground cable. Comes all the way up here to our disconnect. That's the disconnect the solar panels from the grid. And that's where it's tied in, just right into the power meter box. We don't have a backup battery at this point. We may get one in the future. We don't right now. It's got a uh, warning on there. It's a distributed generation system. It can be a risk to uh, utility workers if they have a problem out there. And if this system's making electricity, this is a partly cloudy, somewhat breezy day on March 29th, showing you the power meter and how well it's going to show up. This is a bi-directional power meter. See if we can zoom in on it. Having a little trouble getting the pollen or whatever it is off that meter. But uh, this basically should show what it looks like to be cycling through. See if I can shade it a little bit in the sun. Uh, various displays on the uh, power meter. It's a bi-directional meter. Reads both directions when we're making excess power or when we're consuming more than we're making. Just wanted to show you what this looks like. All right. When we're using excess power, it shows up on our power bill and during a lot of the year we actually get a credit all we have to pay is a grid connection fee of about $28.50 and uh, if during the winter time when the sun's not so bright and a lot of dreary days we use more power than this thing makes and where our power bill gets higher sometimes as high as $200 a month including the grid connection fee first of all this is March 29th today this is roughly real time but you can see here these peaks and then big valleys and so forth because it's a partly cloudy day when a, a lot of clouds come over power drops way off now this is power kilowatts energy of course is power over time now if we look at yesterday on the 28th let's see if we can get to it there we go uh, this is how it varied yesterday and if you look over here, over to the left, I can't move my mouse pointer over there. You'll, you'll see it varying on the left over there, the total power varying during the day. And this is cloudiness. Power drops way off uh, when the clouds come over, so it does make a difference. Now, if we go back further and look at the time, this has changed now to kilowatt hours or energy production. Look at the difference here, like on this day, on March 7th. We are 67.2 kilowatt hours. Look at this day, a real miserable, dreary, rainy day, 6.2. So literally less than 10% of the power production we're making on a good day. It makes a dramatic difference. This is one of the things that's really opened my eyes to solar power as much as I love it, and it's great, that if you have a long string of cloudy, drizzly, rainy days, it can really impact your production. On nice days, especially when it's cooler, it really helps. Now let's go back further and look for the year 
This is for 2020. Uh, it's how it's varied. But what's more interesting, if we go back um, in time, let's say it's 2019. Let's go back to 2018. This is when we first installed it. February 14th, I believe, 2018. That's why this peak's lower than it really should be. But you can see the peak production was in June. Now, uh, this system was put in by Table Rock Technologies. I believe they changed their name now to Table Rock Solar. They did a really nice job on this. They used Axotec panels, the Fronius inverter, uh, very high quality stuff. Um, and uh, but we're connected to the grid through Blue Ridge Electric. We don't have a backup battery. And uh, at that time, Blue Ridge was zeroing out credits in June. Now, in the sense then they switched to March, which is better for us. Let's go to 2019. Here, the peak production was in May. And it's just, again, just probably the weather changing because our panels don't tilt, they don't rotate, or anything like that. And uh, so that shows you how it varies over time. But I think the real notable thing is the... Um, to see how it impacts you when you have cloudy, drizzly, rainy weather. On good days, you can make a lot of energy, and it's, and it's really great. And uh, and really like the system, virtually no maintenance. I do need to get out there and clean off the panels to get the pollen off. Uh, it's gotten bad enough. I probably need to get it off. Uh, but uh, other than that, I hope you learned something from this. And uh, uh, if you did, please uh, like us and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.